Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast, a discussion of the role of doulas in the childbirth process. BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about positive aging. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Maupin, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. Dr. Maupin and Brett are the authors of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about hormone replacement therapy for women, which is available on Amazon or from Dr. Maupin's office at BioBalance Health. Dr. Maupin's office is currently accepting new patients. So Dr. Maupin and I were chatting the other day about something that I know absolutely nothing about, which is not an unusual occurrence. <laughs> but she had used a term in discussing her years as an OBGYN when she was delivering babies all the time that I had never heard and didn't know existed. It was called a doula, a doula, and I don't know anything about them. So she's going to tell us about doulas, who they are, what they are, what, what role they play, and what role they don't play in modern medicine and delivery of babies. So what's a doula? Huh. So a doula is a layperson, meaning they don't have medical training. They haven't been to nursing school or medical school. Or I, I'm a layperson. You're a layperson. Yeah. So, uh, so it's anyone who decides they want to help in pre-childbirth, childbirth, and as a supportive person, and in counseling and care of the baby after birth. So that's what a doula is supposed to be. And it, it comes from a word in Greek that means servant. So it would be someone, it, it should be someone who is, comes alongside a woman who's very insecure or doesn't want to be alone, her husband doesn't want to be in the delivery room. And it should be, her role should be to help with pushing, help with natural childbirth, help with taking the baby home, teaching them, teaching a mother how to bathe it and how to take care of a newborn. That would be the ideal the ideal role for a doula. And remember, they have very little training. Their, uh, their training website says anybody can be a doula. Don't worry. You just have to read it at a early college level or high school level to actually be a doula. So that's the training that a doula Literally, has. Literally, you just have to read at a high school or college level mm -hmm. and be able to read a book right. uh, or little pamphlets that they put together. Right. And then you can just put yourself and there's out there. No, it's not controlled by any state agency like the Board of Healing Arts has a jurisdiction over me, nurses, hospitals, um, nurse practitioners, PAs, but there's no oversight you know, of these people. It's a segue, but yes? in some states that's true for sex therapists as well. Really? They don't have a regulatory agency. You can just claim that you are one, and you are one. Huh. And so people give advice and help. I can meet help. the parents and... Yeah, like, yeah, exactly. But so, but doulas, I mean, conceptually, it's not a bad idea. Conceptually. I mean, people need emotional support if these right. people, uh, or they, uh, they need informational support. Right. I, I don't know if you've ever had a young woman who's going through her first pregnancy or a young couple, but they all get that Dr. Spock book and they, they read it and they worry about it and they fret over things to be good parents. Well, that's why when, when, when I was an OB with my partners, we, the three of us, wrote a book that were a pamphlet, or it was more of a book, of everything we wanted them to know. Right. And required that they read it. And they come to our office once a month in the beginning, and then every couple weeks, and then every week right before delivery. We have time. You provided that for them. Yes. We, had, we gave them the book to read, and then they could ask us questions at each one of those visits. So in reality, you don't need a doula. If your husband's going to be involved in the care... He is then going to childbirth classes. That's what childbirth classes are. But if you are insecure and you really need somebody to just be there to breathe with you and help you push, that might be acceptable. Well, well but, it, but it, okay, so we're making two distinctions here. One is people in modern America who don't have an extensive support system. Right. They don't have a network of emotional support. The traditional families have... They move, they dissolve, they're not there. Social institutions are not husbands as strong not. a foundation. Husbands, uh, husbands or boyfriends may not, may not at all be there. want anything to do with that. Mm -hmm. Or be around. Um, you have all these you know, unwed mothers who are mm -hmm. having babies. So you, so you have situations where real women with real pregnancies or real babies need some support. And mm -hmm. doulas can be ideally positioned to do that. But labor and delivery nurses are ideally positioned to do that. And they actually have a degree in nursing. 
Well, and they have specialty care, specialty training in labor and delivery and have years of experience. And doctors, I mean, we have training, we have four years of college, so beyond what a doula might have, we'd have four years of college, four years of medical school, and four years of residency at 90 hours a week, which when I added it up, it's over that 10,000 hours you need to be an expert. The Malcolm Gladwell yeah. talks about, yeah. So, so basically, we are experts in the birthing process, avoiding disasters, making sure everybody's healthy, mom and baby, that's what we're trained well, then, for extensively. You, you were explaining that to me the other day when we, when we started to discuss this, that there is sometimes a power struggle or a conflict, a perceived power struggle, mm -hmm. between a doula who puts herself in as a patient advocate and tries to give instructions to the medical professional about yep. procedures in a moment of crisis. It may have something to do with the life or functionality of the baby or the mm -hmm. mom. That is a sore spot and inappropriate. Well, it's inter and inappropriate and it hijacks the birthing, the, the, uh, the knowledge and the experience of the physician who has tons of training, has seen everything go good and, get every, and during residency you watch other people have everything go wrong. You know what to do in those crises. But they don't have any experience like that besides their own Well, and they're not birth. even, many of them are cross-trained. They may also have a credential as a counselor, a credential well, as a nurse, but, that's but some not of them are not. It's not required. And so you get the same issue that you get with midwives in some communities. There, there, there's a large subset of the population that don't have access to the modern... The midwives are trained. They have to be very smart. They have to go to nursing school. They have to go to midwife school, okay. midwifery but, school. They have to be trained, tested, and they can't be in the delivery room unless they pass. These no, people are they nobody. Cannot. They just walk in and to do it. To be in the delivery room at the moment of crisis, a medical professional has to make the decision. Right, and a midwife can. But what the doulas also market themselves as is that support and background system for at home, for after the birth care. Well, you know I don't believe in at home deliveries because anything can go bad I and your baby can lose its brain in three minutes. I'm not doing this at home. No. I mean, I would never be the doctor in charge of a home delivery. I wouldn't be a parent who participated in a home delivery. But, but I know people who think got that lucky way and had healthy deliveries. And it, yeah, or not, who knows. Yeah. But but so we're sort of micro focusing on the one critical issue, which is the issue of medical decision making for, right. for critical events. The articulation as I understand it of what doulas have to offer is for a more broad spectrum support. Uh, emotional support, practical information, bring home new diapers for you, bring you a hot meal when you come home the mm -hmm. first three days, stay mm -hmm. with you overnight if you need, help you figure out about the baby sleeping well, or things like that, mm -hmm. that you don't necessarily want to pay a nurse or a doctor's price for. Well, I mean, for. I was a doctor when I had my first baby. I mean, I was an OB when I had my first, my only baby, and I was crying in the hospital because I didn't really know how to take care of postpartum depression. normal babies. I didn't yes. have depression. I had fear. I was fearful that I would kill her because I didn't know didn't what know I was what do. doing yeah. in terms of bathing her or dressing her or when, how long do you let her cry? I've read oh all the gosh. books. I know all that I stuff, but you have to do it. And, and once you do it, then you get better and better at it. When we went to the hospital to get our baby and they handed him to us to get dressed to take home, my wife was so gentle she was so afraid she was going mm -hmm. to hurt him putting clothes on him. You know, yeah. twist his arm, pull his right. arm out of the side. Yeah, of the we're all like that. The and there was this <laughs> old German nurse that said, oh, my God. She takes him. She plops him on her Puts lap. Puts him up here. She's slapping Puts these clothes things, on him. Holds she him against her chest. She licks his head so they can take his picture, you know, coats it. And, and my wife is like, huh, huh, is it going to be okay? Yeah. You know? And the first time we, we gave him a bath. You it's know, scary. The mechanics of that, if yeah. you haven't done it. It's, it even though I... Circ babies and had yeah. took care of babies in the nursery that were sick. I mean, I still didn't know how to bathe them. Yeah. That's a nursing job, and that's not what we did in medical school. So, yes, this would be a great service for somebody who's coming home and un, unaware of what they should be doing, what they shouldn't be doing. Well, it just needs encouragement. And having you know, somebody support. talk you through it and say it's it's okay. You're not. Okay, they're, not they're not going to break that easily. But now, yeah, but now that's not what they get. That's not what they get. What the people that I've... Now well, you've I had some say, really bad experiences. Well, you I've had, had terrible experiences, and so have my partners. I mean, okay. this is not just me. This yeah, is the no, community no. of doulas that are in our, that are in in our, our area yeah. um, who think, and they, t and they meet with the patient a lot, more often than we do, and tell them that they are the expert, and they are going to protect that patient from us. I mean, maybe 30 years ago, when all the, all the OBs were agendas. men... 
and they they pretend they said, oh, all, all doctors are just doing a C-section to go out to go, to the golf course. That doesn't happen. That doesn't happen now. Right. This is half of the OBs are women. I mean, we understand what it's like to have a baby. We understand what it's like to be at the mercy and have your child at the mercy of another person. But you, that's why you have to see your OBGYN and love them and get to know them so in your business. You aren't going to advocate that some woman climb into a, a horse trough that's 98 degrees and let her baby just swim out. No, because surf. most of those babies gulp, breathe water after the cord's cut, and that, yeah. that's aspiration. When you, uh, after yeah, the cord's I, cut, that's not a good thing. I think it's a horrible thing. Yeah, so. I mean, delivering in a hot tub is <laughs> nowhere for a baby. They have to have the air when their head comes out, yeah. and they cut the, we cut the cord, they have to breathe, and that requires being in the air. Yeah. So, in any case, and that's, not, that's just safety. That's, I'm not talking about the experience, because for me, it's not the experience, it's for the next 90 years of this child's life, I want them to have a whole brain. Yes. And I want their mothers to have a whole bottom, and a bottom that isn't, isn't ripped to shreds because, it, because the doula told them to refuse an episiotomy, which I've had happen. Yeah. I mean, you're in the middle of delivering, and the baby is going to, you can tell, the doctor can tell right at the, that point whether the baby's going to tear the bottom, the perineum, when the baby's or not. Crowning. When they're crowning. And so yeah. you wait till the very end. And as you're waiting till the very end and you see it and you can, over experience of doing this thousands of times, right. you can feel it and you know that it's going to rip. So then it's just a quick snip. So then you a do a little cut. snip yeah. that does not disfigure them. What disfigures people's or bottoms it's is tearing, tearing. And ripping. That and has so, to be repaired. Yeah, and it has to be, and, it, and it's like that, hundreds of stitches. And it is, it is so miserable to recover from that. I would yeah. never wish that on my worst enemy. Right. But I've had, in my early days, I had doulas come in where I, I said, okay, you can come in. And I thought they were going to help with labor. And all they did was yell at me and say, my patient refuses an episiotomy. And, and you know, I, I look at the patient and say, really, I'm in charge here. So, you can't, so they're actually in the delivery room and the, and the well, baby is coming and they're right. trying to get your attention? And divert you away yeah. to an argument about right. They want the to argue philosophy. with me because they know more than I do. And without with the degree no or training, without the credential, with no training, even if they had training, they don't know more than but I do. But with a heartfelt belief and a passion. Right. But they've never seen. Some, they've never seen half the time. They've never seen somebody have to be stitched up, and they don't even care because it's not their bottom. Well, yeah. But if it was their bottom, I bet they'd make a they'd make a different decision because nobody wants to sit on that kind of bottom. And it kind of wrecks their sex life if they don't have it. You know, you have to have plastic surgery on your bottom sometimes to have a normal sex life. Yeah. So you don't want to do that. An episiotomy straight down, not to the side, but an episiotomy straight down and a repair is really easy to recover from. And people do great afterwards. So that's, that's one of my experiences. I mean, we've had, we've had dozens of experiences where the doula comes in to the prenatal appointment and she starts telling me what my patient will get or will not get. She is not getting a C-section. She is not getting this. She is not getting that. And the patient's just sitting there like this. Like she's afraid to counter that and say, yeah, I think you should do what you are trained to do. Yeah. That's what they're paying me for. But, you know, is to, or their insurance company is, is, is to have all that knowledge. And that's why I have to have so much malpractice insurance. Right. So when a doula tells a patient to refuse something, right. and I'm trying to respect the patient's refusal, then what am I going to say to a court when I, re when I follow that? So technically, and, and I don't know any of this because, again, I'm a lay person, but if, if I come in and I'm going to have a baby and I refuse an episiotomy, even though you tell me medically you need to have this. It's you have going to get a court make order to make one, get one, just like a C-section. Against my will. Yeah. It, okay. So, so if, if they say, don't do this, and you say you're going to tear, it's going to have, have all to go, kinds of problems. I would, and you don't have time. The baby's head's right there. Right. In this instance, the baby's healthy. It's just the mother that's going to be damaged. I, I think it's really distressing, the idea that they would we'd stop to have an argument in the middle of this. Well, they're usually, I mean, most of the doulas that I've met hate doctors, hate the medical process, think it's terrible, that, and part of it is that they're jealous. Of us, because women we have been can, having babies have for a million years. It's not any specialty. Yeah, but women died in childbirth fifty percent of the time back no. in the eighteen hundreds. I mean, it's not. No, I'm asking. Is that easy. the reasoning that they use to base their foundation yeah. on? There's but they don't an really intrinsic or instinctive knowledge. But if you knowledge. don't know what you don't know, and you haven't seen all the bad Amen. stuff happen, yeah, then you don't know what you, what could happen if you refuse this procedure or that. I mean, my goal is to get a healthy baby with a good brain and healthy mom who can sit down, yeah, and not have to have plastic surgery on her bottom. So. When they're arguing with me and I'm trying right. to, 
I can't, you know, and the patient agrees, I'm refusing. Then you're in a bind. So you're really in a bind, and it's really something that's harming the baby and harming the mother. In some instances, there's fetal distress. We've had, I've had a doula in the room who was, who was I thought was okay until I pulled out a, a suction cup to put on the baby's head because the heart tones went down. When your heart tones are down, there's just so long they can go down without causing hypoxia for the baby's brain. So you have to put on a little suction cup and, and kind of kind of edge the baby out slowly. I mean, you have a, Gently, a, but a firmly. few, yeah. half a minute to, you know, just get the right. baby out right. if the mom can't push so if, or if the baby's head's so big. So you're sneaking the baby's head out at, a, at the proper angle, right. and you've got the doula screaming to me that I shouldn't be putting, I've already done it, putting the Kobayashi on or the suction right. cup on, and the mom's terrified she won't push yeah. because the doula's screaming at me. I mean, wow. in those cases, I have to have security come and take them out of the room. Yeah, and the I mean, mom's frozen. And the mom's frozen distressed. and upset because what the woman should have been doing is supporting the patient right. and helping her and making her feel comfortable, and what she did do is make her feel horrible. The worst ones are when they come in and they give you this, that patients come in with birth instructions. I'm not having an episiotomy. I'm not having this. I'm not having that. I'm not having a C-section. I'm not, well, do you think I want to do a C-section? Right. I don't I mean, know. I don't. I mean, if somebody needs one, I'll do one. But that's not my goal. So, no OB wants to just go. I mean, if they were trying to have the healthiest babies with the roundest heads and the mother didn't want to have anything disturbed on her bottom, then... then so, so, so to pull this conversation okay. back into focus, <laughs> I didn't even know these things existed, that mm -hmm. this, this group of people were out there. And you were telling me about them and how they work and what they do. And in our conversation, you were able to make a distinction between the medical immediacy of labor yes. and delivery, mm -hmm. and the sort of global support in, in lieu of family support or cultural support mm -hmm. that women and children can benefit from mm -hmm. having. So there's a dual role that mm -hmm. can be a positive experience for everybody. Right. But when it becomes conflicted... When they step medical, outside their boundaries. Yes. And, and again, the important information about the level of training and mm -hmm. education that these women or men who are doulas don't have right. to impose their judgment on a situation that is belief driven against a, a medical reality. Mm -hmm. That is an area of intense That's the conflict. Problem. And for those doulas who just do what you're supposed to be doing, I apologize for giving you a bad name. But these are the people that I've come in contact with, and if you want to keep them out, you should probably have some kind of training. Exactly. Training and, <laughs> training and testing to actually have. That's how to give yourself credibility. Durable credibility. Right. Exactly. Right, and, and the people that do this who are nurses, some of them are really nice and really respectful and actually understand the problem and say and talk to the patient and say, it'll be okay. She they know just, the benefits of both roles. She, they know what a C-section is yeah. like. It's not going to be that bad. It'll be fine. She does a good C-section. It'll be, you know, in and out. We'll have the baby out. She'll be crying. It'll be great. You'll be fine. Right. You won't feel anything. Calm so, everything down. Calm everything down. Those, they're, but those are usually nurses who are doulas also. Who okay. are birth birth right. is, um, it's an birth added partners. credential or a focus for them because they've been through the training and they know why we're doing certain things. Yeah. It's hard to know what to do when you don't know why or you haven't been through the same training. So at any rate, if you've never heard of doulas or if you have heard of them and you have curiosity about it, well, hopefully that our discussion today will will give you some points to think about or to ask the doula that you're talking to. What and, kind of credentials do you have? And also ask your physician. Do you work with this? How do you feel about this? Will this create a problem? The last thing you want to do is get to the point of delivery and then have a manufactured crisis because of somebody's agenda. You want mm -hmm. that focus to be the healthy delivery of the baby and the recovery of the mom. Thank you for listening. Thank you. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth. Find Brett Newcomb at brettnewcomb.com.